So it looks like we're getting a new Marvel Legends 90s animated series Spider-Man action figure. But is this one any good? Is it worth your money? And are you gonna be able to get it if you want it? Be sure you stick around until the end, Soulmates, because we're gonna talk about what characters from that show we wanna see next. If you support what I do, please click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single video of mine when it comes out. Way back when, in 1994, Toy Biz made their Spider-Man the Animated Series line, which was chock full of Spider-Man action figures. This line was defined by Spider-Man action figures that had different action features, but largely the same design for Spider-Man. It wasn't like the Batman line going on at the time that had Batman in all kinds of weird suits. This had Spider-Man wearing costumes and doing things that we mostly saw him doing in the show, or else we saw him doing it in the comics. But back then, there was one Spider-Man action figure released in this line that stood above all the rest, and it was Super Poseable Spider-Man. This Spider-Man didn't really come with any accessories. His main selling point was that he looked pretty close to what we saw as an exact replica of Spider-Man from the TV show, and he had multiple points of articulation, and this wasn't really something that we saw a lot of back in 1994, because the only real comparable action figure we'd really seen up to that point was either G.I. Joe, or else we saw another version of a superposable Spider-Man released earlier in the Marvel superheroes line. But this action figure was kind of a big deal because he was a much closer representation of Spider-Man from the TV show than the previous release from Marvel superheroes was to the comic book Spider-Man. Granted, by today's standards, he is a little bit lackluster. He doesn't have a hip swivel. He doesn't have an ab crunch. His head doesn't really look up and down all that well, and he doesn't have double jointed knees or elbows. On another note, something that's ironic about this toy is that he has a fist. And that's surprising because on Spider-Man the Animated Series, it was mandated that Spider-Man shouldn't punch anyone. So the fact that he has a fist here is quite the surprise. You'd think they would have given him a wall crawling hand or another thwip hand instead of a fist. And speaking of different hands, that takes us to this new release from Hasbro that's based on the 90s animated series. We're getting Spider-Man. And this one is kind of a surprise to me because there haven't been that many animated series style action figures, but given this, it seems that they're starting to lean more into the animated series style action figures more and more for the Spider-Man retro line. There's a number of things I noticed right off the bat looking at this Spider-Man action figure. And one of the first things I notice is that he actually has accessories in the box, unlike the original Toy Biz Superposable Spider-Man. This Spider-Man comes with a couple of webs, he comes with two sets of extra hands, and those are all pretty nice accessories. I'm not a big stickler on web effects, to be honest, because I remember back when I first had my first Spider-Man action figures, what I would do is I would just make webs out of twine and stuff, and that was perfectly fine. That worked for me. Aside from that, something that struck me about this one is that his body looks a little thin, and it's because apparently they're using the Amazing Fantasy 15 body for this Spider-Man, and that's so strange to me because Spider-Man from Spider-Man the Animated Series is a pretty jacked Spider-Man. He's more jacked than I really like my Spider-Man to be. But my personal preference aside, Spider-Man from the Animated Series is supposed to be pretty buff. And this body feels a little too thin for him, so why would they go with that? It seems to me that they should have gone with the body that they just used for the Spider-Man and Spinneret 2-pack. Honestly, that's already a pretty buff Spider-Man body. All you had to do was give it 
bright Spider-Man the Animated Series colors, and the action figure was good to go, really. You could have given that this action figure's head sculpt, and I wouldn't have batted an eye. I would have said, yeah, that looks about right for this Spider-Man. It's not so much that reuse is bad, it's just that when you do reuse things, it has to be really smart, or else it comes off tacky. Another thing that struck me about this action figure is the paint application, and at first I didn't notice the cell shading on this one, but then after I looked at it for about a minute, I realized, oh no, there's cell shading on it, and well, it's one of those trends that seems to be going across Marvel Legends right now, and I wish it wouldn't because I really don't like the cell shading. I really don't. The so-called X-Men the Animated Series line has been doing it for every single action figure, and now Iceman has it in the Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends 3-pack, and now Spider-Man from Spider-Man the Animated Series has it. And I went from being kind of interested in this action figure to having virtually no interest at all because I just really don't like it. It looks so bad. I wouldn't mind it so much if they were just outlining his muscles and stuff. And the weird thing about the paint application on this one is that they did outline his abs a little bit. And when you look at the rest of his costume with the web designs on the red portions, you see that there is not a black outline around that edge so it doesn't pop as much. You see that the webs are spilling outside of the red onto the blue part and there's no outline around the edge of the red portions. so I mean they invested all that cell shading where they could have invested more in cleaning up the paint apps on the proper costume. And the thing of it is, is looking at this thing it's not just here's a little boo-boo here and there on the webs, it's kind of happening constantly. The webs are constantly spilling outside of that red onto the blue. It's really messy looking. Also, while I'm thinking about that red strip going down the middle of his body looks a little too thin. I would have made this one slightly wider, but you know, in Spider-Man the Animated Series, I've told you guys again and again, the animation on that show was incredibly inconsistent, so Honestly, this looks pretty fine. I just would have done it a little bit differently if I had made it. And either way, I think is fine. Because we do see Spider-Man looking like this on the animated series, but we also see Spider-Man with a wider strip going down the middle on the animated series. So, what are you gonna do? Something that really, really surprised me about this release is that it's standard price for a Marvel Legend. This one is $25, so that's actually really good. Now, whether or not you want to spend $25 on a Marvel Legend, that is up to you, but overall, I'd say that this is a fairly decent release, even though I'm not big on the cell shading. I know a lot of people are into it. I hate it, but a lot of people seem to love it for some reason. No, the real problem with this one, and this is probably the biggest problem of them all, is that this is a Walmart exclusive, and I just cannot figure out why, why, why they made this a Walmart exclusive because you know this is one that so many people have been wanting. Everyone's got those nostalgia feels for Spider-Man the Animated Series, and this just seems like a no-brainer. Make it a standard release, but instead, no, you gotta make it a Walmart exclusive, and now guess what? No one's really able to get it because bots are buying it. And on Walmart, is anyone really surprised? This isn't John Walker Captain America. This isn't Ulick. This is Spider-Man, a very desirable Spider-Man. And so, pretty much immediately after it appeared, it disappeared. So now, rightfully, a lot of people are very upset that they're not able to get Spider-Man. And, you know, the Walmart exclusive thing is just awful because I've had certain orders get canceled by Walmart right out from under me, and I have not been very happy about that. I've been much happier with Target, and honestly, 
I have had better luck with a Walgreens exclusive sometimes, believe it or not. At least when the Walgreens exclusives show up online, I can say, yeah, I had a chance to get them, I just didn't. I tried to go to this action figures page, and guess what? It just didn't exist anymore. Just a massive, massive L. And you know what's wild is that I can get the lizard very easily on Walmart right now, so there is absolutely no reason why we shouldn't be able to get Spider-Man from the animated series very easily. Is this one worth your money? Well, for what it's worth, he is a pretty accurate Spider-Man for the most part. Body type aside, that isn't really jacked enough, but still, it does hit most of the right notes. And the only thing that might hold you back on this one, I think, aside from that, is the somewhat messy paint apps and, well, the cell shading if you're really not into that sort of thing. Well, soulmates, now that we've seen this Spider-Man, what character do we want to see next? Guys, I've been saying it again and again, I want to see Dr. Octopus. He is the obvious choice and I hope that we see him sooner rather than later because I want to see what they do with him. I'd like to see an animated series version, but I wouldn't be mad about an Armani suit Dr. Octopus either. Point is, I just want to see a Dr. Octopus with some bendy tentacles. Well, soulmates, what do you think about this Spider-Man the Animated Series action figure? Is this one that you have to have for your collection? Are you really not feeling the nostalgia? Or are you kind of on the fence about this one because of quality issues? Or maybe you don't like the cell shading? I don't know, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think about this one. I would love to hear from you. And be sure you tell me what character you want to see next in the Spider-Man Retro line. If you want to learn more about the Spider-Man Retro line lizard, you can check out that video here, soulmates. Mm -hmm.